Hi everyone, it's a ticket to Christ. Thank you for tuning back in. We are in the Glorifying God at Work series. We're looking at Psalm 37. Fret not thyself because of evil doors, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him, Fret not thyself because of him that who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. And this is an excellent passage. If you're working around contentious people, if you're dealing with people who are not just, who are backbiters uh, or who you know deliberately exclude you or rather than being glad that you're a good worker or glad that you have integrity they treat you badly because of envy and jealousy right this is a good scripture to model your life and to obey it says don't fret yourself what does it mean to fret you know don't worry don't get anxious don't don't frustrate yourself from within don't don't um, don't be full of anxiety. Don't be full of frustration and anger. And you know, when you're fretting, you're not in a state of peace. And it's a state of working yourself up because of the behavior of others. So he says, don't allow yourself to be worked up, to get anxious, you know, to get upset, <laughs> um, to to get disquieted in your inner being because of the evil behavior of others. And don't be envious um, of them. Don't look at their life and wish to be like them or to have what they have or to be in their position. Like don't, don't admire anything about them. Don't want it, you know. Don't seek to go after it and don't follow any pattern of their behavior. And it says why? Because in verse two, they're going to be cut down like grass. When you look at your grass outside and you do your lawn or you, you know, cut grass if you don't have a lawn. It's just, you cut it and it's, you throw it away. You know, it, it's um, here today, gone tomorrow. You know, it's a dime a dozen. Um, but he gives us a model of how to behave. Trust the Lord. What does it mean to trust the Lord? It means that you obey him, you have faith in him, and you wait for him. If you trust the Lord, you're going to do things his way. You're going to do what he says to do. He says, love your enemies. He says, do not um, revenge. It is Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Um, it says, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with people, right? It says to be humble, to be meek, to show mercy, right? So that's what it means to trust the Lord. To trust the Lord means to to... to come into agreement with his nature, with his own righteousness, and um, reflect who he is and wait for him. It says, and do good. So not just holding that position, but also turning around and doing good for the bad that you that has been done to you. So if somebody deliberately doesn't help you with your job, when it's your turn, you still help, right? You still give, you still um, show them kindness. Whatever your position, you know, it depends on the position that you have would be the act to go with it. You know, whatever station you find yourself in, whether you're a manager or you're a worker, whether you're in a, a high ranking position or you're a cleaner, um, taking the level of integrity with you that's fitting is what he's talking about here. So if you're a, a cleaner you're going to clean to the best of your ability and you're going to go the extra mile and treat people with, um, you know, with respect and be humble. If you're the employer, you are going to treat your workers with compassion, with mercy, with understanding, setting up proper professional boundaries in place 
um, showing yourself to be just and to be honorable and to have integrity within yourself, right? Um, and it says that um, this comes with a consequence that you will dwell in the land and verily thou shall be fed. So uh, the Lord will prosper you in that position. That's the position to hold, right? Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of thine heart. What does it mean to delight yourself in the Lord? That you're you're focusing on who he is, you're singing praises to him, you're enjoying his nature, who he is, who he is to you, who um, his provisions and his actual character, right? And God will put on your heart his desires for you. It's not that you're going to get what you want, but God will give you, hit, bring revelation about what his will is for you, and you will do, be delighted to do his will, right? Um, you commit your way to the Lord. You trust in him, um, meaning that any decision that God has put in your heart to make, the steps that you're to take, you commit them to the Lord, that the Lord will lead your steps. The Bible says man plans his course, but God determines the steps, right? So um, you want to commit your path, your program, your day, your journey to the Lord and ask Holy Spirit to um, ask Father to empower Holy Spirit in your day to lead you, um, that you will listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, listen to his counsel, listen to his direction, um, including the timing for when things need to happen. And you do so with patience, it's saying here, you know, um, not focusing on other people's um, life, how they seem to thrive, even though they're wicked, how they seem to get away with things. Don't focus on that. Um, don't judge things by how they look. That's what it's saying here. Keep your eyes fixed on the Lord. Keep your eyes fixed on his character, delighting in his ways, admiring his behavior, how he says to do things and taking delight in that you know, reject the ways of the world, the ways of the enemy, um, the patterns of the enemy, and seek to align yourself fully with the ways of the Lord at work. And so this passage is a good one to study through when you want to have a good attitude and a spiritual attitude and a righteous attitude. If you're dealing with contentious people at work or you're in a contentious work situation, that you go prayed up and just really focused and anchored in this way, demonstrating the character of God so that you bring this type of witness and testimony to God. That what they're seeing is someone who is um, at peace within themselves, someone who's doing good, someone who's joyful, delighting in the Lord with a good attitude, uh, someone who's kind, someone who's showing mercy, someone who's not argumentative and bickering, and running here and there, but doing their word, work quietly and in peace, um, always being uh, uh, ready to, you know, help, always being ready to give kindness, always being ready to show mercy and compassion, and just praying it to yourself throughout the day, because if you're in that type of volatile work environment, you need to really pray. And sometimes people will say quit, but it's not always that someone can quit their job. Sometimes that's the only job you can get, or sometimes it's a good paying job and you like the work, so you don't want to quit it. Um, and so, you know, a lot of times what we, God uses the situation to grow our character so that we can grow in fruits of the spirit and to strengthen us. And so view it as an opportunity um, for your character to grow and to grow fruit of the spirit as a training ground so that you can overcome. So look to overcome the circumstance with good and not be overcome by the circumstance you're in. That's what I see in the scriptures. That's what I see the Lord saying, both in this passage and in other passages in the Bible, they always pray and seek to overcome. And the Lord uh, told us to overcome the world right? Do not over be overcome by the world, but overcome the world. Because why? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We serve a powerful God. We're full of the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Romans uh, 8, 11, I believe, says that the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in us. 
And that's the spirit at work in you. And he is a spirit that is more powerful than anything the world can throw against you. And so you walk in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, full of joy and full of confidence that God is with you because he's in you. Okay, beloved, that's it from me for today. Um, I hope this blesses you in some small way. Take care. Bye-bye.